I can see you guys. You can? Yep. Yeah, okay, well, it's um, four minutes after six, so we're going to start up here. And I guess we have to do a roll call because see if the call is. Sorry about that. Vice President Jaffe. Present. Director Lather. Present. Director Lehu. I am here. And President Christensen. Here. Okay, we don't have a present uh, a public hearing. And so this is the time to uh, remove items from the consent agenda if any board members wish to. I just, I'll make a comment on one of make them when the time is appropriate, but okay. I don't have anything to remove. Do you want to make the comment right now? Uh, oh, do sure. we have some pub we have public comment? Do we? Is our do you, are there any public comments on the consent agenda? All right. I'll move approval. I'll second. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Lee, you want to make a comment? Well, I can just make it when you take the vote. That's fine. Okay. And also. Since we have someone calling in, we'll have to do a roll call vote um, for each item. So, uh, Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director Lehue? Yes, and my only thing I wanted to pass along is just we discussed th at the, um, you know, Water um, Resource and Infrastructure Committee meeting, something that I just noticed again on the management report is just that at some point on with WaterSmart or some other um, entity, whether it's always WaterSmart or not, um, it'd be really nice to have an app so that people could have an easy to use app rather than having to go online. And I think people would use it more. But anyway, that's all. I second. And I'll vote yes on consent. Director Lather? Yes. And President Christensen? Uh, yes. Okay. Oral and written communications. And uh, we have, are there any public members who wish to make an oral comment that isn't on the agenda? Okay. Any, anyone else? Board members? No. Okay. Nope. Well, we'll move on then to the Ports District Council. <laughs> Oh, he's back in the picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm back on Zoom. Uh, yeah, it was nice to see everyone in person at the last meeting, though. Um, just really briefly, um, uh, President Christensen, uh, just a reminder to the board, uh, you know, legislative process is still moving forward. Uh, a couple weeks ago was the deadline for bills to make it out of their originating house. Um, so now everything that made it out of the assembly is with the Senate. Anything that made it out of the Senate is over in the assembly. Um, so we have an idea of what is what, what may move forward this year. Still too early for us to start going into details um, on, on specific bills, um, but just wanted to provide that as an update and, a, and as a reminder, as we kind of move through the summer, we'll get a much better idea as to what's gonna move forward and, and we'll start bringing some of the highlights forward just so the board's aware. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comments on that? Okay. Uh, Administrative business now. I guess this is the uh, seven point one will serves. We don't have any this time. Uh, seven point two approve various scopes of work for continued professional consulting services related to the Pure Water SoCal program. Good evening, board. I'm going to be presenting on this item tonight, which is to approve various scopes of work that we have and have been supporting the Pure Water SoCal program. So I would like to just note that um, we are asking for the board to review and approve these scopes. And I'd like to give just a quick background and then of course open up for some discussion. Chair, sure, thanks. Thanks, Ron. Still getting the uh, technical support and the uh, presentation together. Um, as you know, we have been uh, working on the Pure Water SoCal program since 2014. 
when the board identified recycled water as the water uh, new supplemental water supply to address the critical overdraft in seawater intrusion that is occurring in the Santa Cruz Mid-County Groundwater Basin. Since that time, the board set us on a pretty aggressive timeline of evaluating, um, designing, constructing, um, receiving and pursuing funding and all of the permit associated with bringing the project online with the goal of 2022. We are close. Um, construction has uh, began in 2020 and over the last three years we've been working very diligently on the construction activities however uh, we are seeing that the project is still ongoing in terms of the construction activities and as such the anticipated date for the project to be online and operational has moved out to 2024. With that um, extension, we are needing some additional assistance with our existing professional services contracts to help us get the project through the finish line. So before uh, the board tonight are six uh, contracts that are we are requesting some additional budget support as well as a time extension, specifically Brown and Caldwell, who has been providing the program management, construction management, and project management activities. Um, Data Instincts, who has been performing the education and outreach both for Pure Water Soquel as well as the Community Water Plan. ESA, which is providing environmental services support and permitting. Hanson Bridget for their legal assistance on the design build contracts. Pacific Crest, which is providing quality assurance and field inspection services and Silvera Consulting, who has been providing us assistance with labor compliance. All of these consultants have been under contract over the last several years. We have ongoing contracts with them. So this before you is uh, detailed in the attachments one through six, the scopes of work um, associated with continuing that lo same level of support through the end of the uh, project period, which is the contract completion of we're anticipating 2024. It should be noted um, that we also did want to address that the budget amounts here included within the attachments are for work on a time and material basis. So again, that is typically how our professional contracts are. Um, if they um, are working on the project, it is for not to exceed. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is the lump sum cost. So Taj, um, myself, as well as our, our staff, manages these contracts. If additional funds are needed, we would need to come back to the board for a subsequent approval. I think one thing to address in terms of the fiscal impact as well is that um, before the board at the last board meeting, um, when you approved the budget for fiscal year 23-24, and then it also includes a projection for the fiscal year uh, following that, these contracts and the budget amounts were included in the budget and so that means that the amounts herein have been approved by the board uh, for this coming fiscal year. Again, I think um, this is a limited uh, term project so we aren't seeing that we would need to try to look at other ways to offset these project costs. We have a very small staff. Again, primarily it's the three of us that are working on Pure Water Soquel and then we have two additional um, staff members and then um, our engineering staff. So it's a burden in terms of needing outside assistance, um, but we don't see that once the project is completed that we would need to do something that would, I think, minimize the impacts and maybe try to do some of the work in-house. We don't want to, we don't want to create that kind of long-term burden and we feel that this is better use of our ratepayer funds and to assist us just temporarily with some consultant services. Um, I'm available for questions if you have any, um, or maybe Ron or Taj, if, if there's questions as well from them. I'll, I'll open it up to the public. Any questions? Yeah. I just have a quick question. <laughs> and that does this uh, schedule, the schedule into 2024, does that include the certification too, or is that apart from the construction? We are hoping to um, do startup commissioning of the project so that it is our, our, our scope right now 
and our target goal date is to have the project operational by third quarter of 2024. Is that what you mean by certification? That's the question. Yeah, I was just, just wondering how. Um, yeah, it was. Well, the commission, I thought that the, there was a state certification process. Yes, that will be part of the startup and commissioning. The state will come out and they will um, do some testing and we'll have to have the, the system certified. They would then approve that and then that gives us kind of the green light for the water, the purified water to be ready to be injected into the groundwater, um, seawater intrusion wells. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted to know. <laughs> okay. So I've, I've got a couple of questions. It appears that since these are not to exceed contracts that uh, they're fairly broad in what in what what they're saying they're going to do so what, what's the process with the with the staff on determining what's necessary and what isn't necessary definitely is flexible in terms of adaptation so that um, we can meet um, maybe some of the external factors that may address or come into play with the project so for example um, ESA, and we can talk about any if you have anything in specific, Dr. Jaffe, but in terms of ESA, a lot of it is related to addressing the mitigation and monitoring efforts of the construction activities. So they will, um, for, for instances like that, if there's some construction activity that has different areas of work being um, done at the same time, then they may send out um, a field inspector to oversee that. And then at times the construction activities may be reduced, then ESA will flex that. So they don't necessarily always have, you know, a set number of people evaluating the, the job sites. They'll ebb and flow based upon the construction work activities. Um, similar with data instincts, um, it is a little bit broad. They have some of their activities will be to just generally support the outreach activities related to construction. They'll also maybe peak when we have like our ribbon cutting event, um, when we may be talking a little bit more of an outreach or event that is scheduled, we may have um, some additional support. Again, we kind of try to do it based upon the, the schedule of work. And we also are always trying to be mindful of, of, the, of the cost. Okay, so the, the process would be, for instance, with ESA, we have a certain construction activity going on. They would come to you and go, we need to do A, B, and C related to this, to be in compliance. Yeah, very, very much so. I'll, I'll take a shot at it. So actually, the process has already started, right? We work a lot, especially Melanie and Taj, with the consultants to go, What's the horizon look like? What do we think we need to do? And so that's laid out in front of you. But as we move through that, then these are basically, basically the um, conductors of the orchestra, so to speak, saying, okay, it looks like this is coming up. Sometimes it comes from the consultant, hey, we need to tackle this. And then they kind of release that, so to speak, that effort to go forth. So it's very much controlled. But the dialogue, dialogue is two-way, sometimes coming from us directing them to, to do that, you know, under the, this contract, or maybe a consultant says, we, we feel there's a need for X, Y, or Z, mm -hmm. and then there's a discussion around that. And you've been working with these consultants for a number of years, so mm -hmm. there's trust that's been built up. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And as you probably know, I get shocked by outreach costs, and uh, I just... Um, I understand the necessity, but I, that's one area that I, that I think that we should be uh, aware of the, you know, the, the costs in, involved with it. And I know that you are already, but I just wanted to point that out. So I have nothing, that's all I wanted to, to ask about. I have a question. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, believe it or not, it's about an acronym. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I just 
on Pacific Crest Engineering, they started talking about observation of HMA placement and spot testing of HMA compaction, and I just didn't know what that was. That's hot mix asphalt. Okay, can they remind them all to define their acronyms, okay? Okay. <laughs> That's an engineering term, so I just want to be clear. Uh, okay. But I mean, you know, we're trying to read these and understand them. I have no idea. No, I, I'm just making light of it. No, absolutely. We we tried it. We may endeavor to, to spell out every acronym. We take it seriously. Um, yeah. The name's just funny. That's why I say that. I do think it's funny. I think and it's and I, I do want to note that we can see you both on screen, just in case you're wondering how that's working. Uh, Great. Dr. Williams. Okay. Great. Hi. <laughs> well, if you're ready for a motion. Yes, I think so. I'll make the motion. I'll second. The motion, sorry, there's there's six of them, is it? Six. Yeah. Let me make sure, reread them to make sure that. Uh, did you uh, check for a public comment already? I believe you did. We did at the beginning, I think. Yeah. Okay. What page is it on? Oh, it's page uh, 73. So it would be one through six. That's correct. And not seven, which is take no action. So I'll make that motion. So I was going to second it, but I also had one last, I had one last question at the top. That was, um, and that is these are still covering the, these are still within the con, the grants and loans that we Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director LeHue? Yes, and I wanted to just thank staff because I really do trust staff to be careful about spending money and also trying to get it done as you know efficiently as, as possible. So thank you. Director Lather and President Christensen. Yes. Passes unanimously. Passed unanimously. Um, all right, moving to 7.3. Uh, RFQ for uh, on-call engineering design and surveying services. I'll take that. So um, the board might remember in the budget that was approved uh, last meeting that uh, the district has a couple larger projects coming um, besides pure water SoCal, and, and one of the main ones is the hexavalent chromium project. And um, recently we've seen some more activity at the state level, and they're, uh, they've released a draft MCL, and it's the same as it was previously. It's 10 parts per billion. Mm -hmm. And what's, what's not known is when it will become effective based on, you know, it's a little late in the year to be potentially getting it effective on the 1st of January 2024. Um, I think the latest it would become effective would be January 2025. Um, but regardless, we don't anticipate this taking a, a drastic turn. And so we want to resume um, efforts on that front. And so this year's budget includes uh, funds to begin the design on that or resume the design, I should say. And the other uh, project is the Cunnison Well, and that is a well that has been on the district's radar for almost 10 years now. It's part of the Well Master Plan EIR, and it will need a, an iron and manganese treatment plant, and that's what we will uh, be seeking um, services for. The design of the well is already underway with Montgomery Associates, and of course, the, um, the environmental review was completed with the EIR. So um, if there's any questions, 
Um, what we will do is bring back a specific scope for each one of those. Those are the main ones. There's potentially some smaller um, projects that we may uh, reach out to these consultants once once selected, but I see those as being the, the primary scopes that you would see as a board for approval, probably I would assume in September. At the September board meeting, you would see the scopes for those. But at this stage, it's it's just a uh, a release of a request for qualifications, and then also a decision of whether anyone on the board would like to participate in the selection committee. Are there any questions? Any comments? Again, the two motions are on the. Oh, there's some questions, but public comment is invited. Now it is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Becky Steinbrenner, I, I did see that the Kennison Well Project is included in the Mid-County Groundwater Agency's annual report to the state for 2022 that it will happen this year. So I hope that it does and uh, hope that you do keep the MGA um, administrators, of which you are part, but uh, Mr. Carson does a great job doing those uh, those reports. So thank you. Any other comments? Any questions? I, I just was. Uh, I guess the question is open to the board and anyone wanting to. You're a natural. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go. And I'll go to you. Yeah. It's not mandatory, but if you wish, you, you're more than welcome to. So if you, if you want, we'll send you the, uh, the proposals when we receive them. Yeah. OK, got that part settled. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Ready for a motion? Yes. I'll, I'll make um, the motions with Rochelle, authorizing Rochelle to be a participant. And you said you were interested too, or no? Well, I'll just, it said two people, so I'll just, I don't have to. No, if you want to. Okay. And Carla, yeah. as board members participating. Vice President Jaffe. I'm loud enough I didn't have to have um, to. Aye. Director LaHue. Yes. Director Lather. Yes. And President Christensen. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, 7.4, 7. this is the... The uh, item to uh, for direction regarding um, the board of directors vacancy in case anyone um, isn't aware, uh, Dr. Bruce Daniels resigned from the board effective June 19th. So. Yes, <clears throat> and President Christensen, uh, Tracy, our HR manager, and I are going to double team this. I'm just going to give a little opening. I think it's deserving. And then Tracy's going to kind of okay. walk more through the logistics part. So, uh, y yes, uh, Dr. Bruce Daniels uh, submitted his resignation to, to me and, the, and to the board members. And it was a beautiful letter, very eloquent, in that um, he, while he says he'll be cheering us on from the sidelines, he needs to move on to the next phase of his life. Uh, he's going to focus on uh, computer modeling, I think, actually, for textbooks to, so uh, students can uh, actually... Um, use his models to run what's there to re theoretically describe in the really specific it is his first uh, task is a climatology book and since he's a climatologist he's used some of the formulas but i know from my own work 
we didn't have a program that you could just mm -hmm. plug in data. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And this would be in the textbook that would show them so they could actually work with the models in the textbook. Yes, very exciting uh, for him and uh, his wife and to be able to travel some. And then and um, he also said uh, he, you know, really enjoyed his time on the uh, regional board, uh, nine. And then also one of his uh, proud of achievements, uh, as he stated, was uh, uh, bringing on uh, Pure Water Soquel. So just wanted to make that known. And, um, you know, we're just so thankful for his time. I know, you know, he's given us a lot of, me personally, a lot of direction and to work with somebody who's that experienced and um, that background, you know, feel very, very fortunate. So with that, I'll hand it over to Tracy to take it from here. Thank you. Okay, good Can I evening. Say something too? Um, I, I just, sure. I just, I would just wanted to just, say a quick little thing is just that you know whether i always agreed with bruce or not on the way to do things i think we always you know had similar goals as far as you know trying to make a difference and and for the for our community and for our water supply so i feel like he always went out every day trying to make a positive difference um and so i think he's going to keep doing that so We'll miss his scientific expertise, but I know he'll be doing good stuff. Absolutely, and we'll get him back up here one more time. I mean, we're just, it's too quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll give I'm him sure. a proper uh, good yeah. morning. This is, take care of business for now. And since Tom said something, I'll say something as well. <laughs> it just a uh, tremendously dedicated person and had a lot to offer with his expertise and very critical thinker. And uh, I'm going to miss him, and the district is going to miss him as well because he offered a lot to, as a board member. Yeah, yeah I would chime in on that. He's, uh, his uh, knowledge of the aquifer underscored all of the underpinning for our efforts on Pure Water SoCal, really. The knowledge that he he produced for his PhD thesis was really the core of our impetus <laughs> and drive to get the Pure Water Soak Health supported and done. So I really appreciate that heavy lifting for him. Um, am I the only one that was going to wait until it was our turn to I talk? It again. <laughs> After the staff presentation, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll wait until after your presentation when the directors can speak. <laughs> okay, so you guys get the fun stuff. I get the uh, I get the nitty gritty business mm -hmm. stuff. So I'm presenting this um, item to you tonight um, to discuss the board's wishes in terms of how to proceed in order to deal with the vacancy that was created by Dr. Daniels. Um, as the memo notes, the district is required to notify the Santa Cruz County Election Department within 15 days of the date of the Board of Directors is notified of the vacancy or the effective date of the vacancy, um, whichever is later. And um, we have notified the Board of Elections. We did send them notice last week. Um, we've been trying to communicate with the Board of Elections. They're not the easiest group to get a hold of. so. Um, we, we're, we're working on some of the additional details um, to gather from them in our process. But some things we wanted you to consider tonight um, were some of the options available to you. So basically within 60 days of the date on which the board is notified of the vacancy or the effective date of the vacancy, which is ever later. Um, so we're gonna be using for purposes of that, um, that target of June 19th, the effective date of the resignation. That kind of is a trigger point for us. Um, district board members must fill the vacancy by one of two means. Um, you can choose appointment or you can call an election. Um, and if the board uh, does not um, act within that period of time, um, then the County Board of Supervisors, uh, the, the authority rolls to the County Board of Supervisors and they may appoint a board member or order the district to call an election. Um, the final day of the 60-day period for the board to act within the statutory timeline beginning yesterday, June 19th, is August 18th, 2023. 
Um, and if the board does appoint someone, uh, the appointee will serve the remainder of Director Daniel's term, which will be the, uh, the term that started 2020 and goes through de December 2024. So I wanted to talk about um, the options with board appointment um, and uh, or calling an election. Does the board have an interest in me spending more time on one of these options or another? Or would you like me to, to kind of go yeah. through all options of um, appointment or election? Well, personally, I'm not in favor of an election. So uh, the bulk of the time or even all the time, I think, would be on the appointment process for me. I don't know if the other sure, directors yeah. feel the I same agree. way. I agree. Okay, I, I thought there might be a preference there, so I thought we'd ask. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so if the board uh, decides to fill the vacancy by appointment, it must uh, we must post a vacancy notice. Um, and I've attached a draft sample of a vacancy announcement. Um, we have to do so um, by the terms set forth in Government Code Section 1780. Um, and these rules are also governed by, or these processes are also governed by um, Election Code Sections 1000 through 1003. Um, those uh, those um, sections are included in your packet tonight. Um, the, the district must post that vacancy announcement for at least 15 days before the appointment is made. Um, and we must do so in th at least three consecutive spots um, within the district. Um, and uh, additionally, the board may choose to um, direct staff to uh, push that notice out, that vacancy notice out to um, other areas as suggested in the, uh, the memo, which would include uh, potentially our website, our newsletter, uh, newspapers, direct emails, um, whether to our customers or to um, maybe selected individuals who have uh, volunteered to work as our standing committee members um, who have already expressed interest in being a part of district process and, and function. Um, so that's, that's what uh, our next step is. Um, we wanna make sure that the board understands that we've got some meetings where we might wanna identify our, our um, process. So looking at our timeline and the, the work that we need to do within those timelines, um, we need to make sure that the process takes place on or prior to August 18th, 2023. If we post a vacancy notice, um, you know, with this, uh, this week, uh, it allows for the 15 day posting time. If we do it tomorrow, the board would be able to hold interviews beginning July 6th. So that kind of um, gives us that, that timeline of that 15 day posting period and then we can act uh, moving forward on that. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the board was aware again that we have um, only two board meetings uh, scheduled in July um, and August. We only have one e on, during um, uh, each of the months, so only one in July, one in August. So with that, the board may identify um, that they may choose to hold a special board meeting or potentially two special board meetings. We have some experience with this. Um, unfortunately, back in 2016, we did have a board member, as you may recall, who passed away um, uh, during the term of his uh, uh, seat. And so we do have some guidelines and some experience in going through that process. And um, when we did hold an, an appointment last time and posted that vacancy, it actually required us to have two days worth of um, interviews. Uh, we interviewed each of the candidates, the eligible candidates who had submitted an application, and um, we did that in two different dates. So um, if the, uh, that's something for the board to consider tonight to potentially request um, or to appoint a, a special meeting um, potentially two with the opportunity to cancel one if it's not needed. Um, and I put some timelines in the board memo so that you know what we, I kind of targeted Tuesdays since those might be freer days for us um, and for the board <clears throat> for you to kind of identify what dates might work best for you um, in, in appointing um, uh, dates to hold a special meeting and then uh, make that um, appointment at a subsequent regular board meeting. I'll just add that, um, thank you, Tracy, that was awesome. 
Uh, you can also make the appointment at the special meeting if you like, but we're trying to give you some options and just make sure we don't uh, go through the um, timeline. And I, I, I didn't remember how you did it. I know I did it, but... Right. And, it, and it's an, I don't it's, remember it being a board meeting. That's it's an open meeting. It is a board meeting. It's a, public is, is allowed 10. Generally, we, if there are people, um, you know, uh, trying out their candidacy or coming to you, a lot of times they'll wait in the lobby just out of respect, and then they come in one at a time. But it's, it's, it's not, it's their option, right? That's voluntary. But uh, last time we did it at the district, and two days, two special board meeting days, I think back to back, Tracy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there were like 20 candidates, I believe. Uh, you you interviewed them all, and I think we made it. The board made a selection at a subsequent meeting. I can't remember that part. No, the, I believe they made the appointment at the. Um, there was time. Second meeting. Yeah, at the second meeting. Mm -hmm. Somebody might remember that was on it. But I mean, I, it just there. selfishly, <laughs> and maybe giving them more time for applications. I like the later dates you selected, but still within that window. Oh, like, which dates? I guess 18th and 15th. The 25th, they said, and um, 25th or 1st or 8th, right around there. The, the regularly scheduled board meeting is the August 15th uh, regular board meeting. Mm -hmm. And there are three Tuesdays that we might, um, you might consider as special meeting dates Prior to that August 15th board meeting, actually, there's more if you want to use January, but uh, to, to speak Bye. to your um, interest, uh, Director LaHue, um, more time to provide application, to give uh, applicants more time to apply. Uh, you've got three Tuesdays in which to, um, uh, to work with, July 25th, Tuesday, uh, August 1st, or Tuesday, August 8th. Those all fall before the August 15th regularly scheduled board meeting. Are we going to do those in the evening or during the day? Well, that's that's a good them, question. That would, that's one yeah, of the that reasons. That would be a decision that you that you were able to make tonight. They're, they're, we did them in the evening when you. It's a blur. <laughs> yeah, we did them. I remember the nights though. I do remember the evenings. So. I think one of the things that's important and it's in a motion in here is a, an ad hoc committee to work with Tracy, Emma, and me because. There'll be questions like, are you going to interview people virtually or, you know, who knows, or are we going to do them in the nighttime or daytime? So that would be very helpful. The idea is to get the dates down now because that's critical and then get us some um, advisors, if you will, to board members. I guess available any of those evenings. Let's see, with, with a four-member board, we're still allowed to have two on this committee, correct? Josh, that's is correct. that correct? Yes as long as we don't have a majority. I'd be willing to help with that, but I'm fine if somebody else, other two people want to do it too. I have a particularly busy July and August, so I will not be able to help. I will look at all the applications, so. I'm sure. I'll be firmly planted here in July. <laughs> It'll be between you two. Yeah, I guess it's us again. Well, Tom and is Tom going to be around? Tom says he want, wants to be he part of. It. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to help. If you guys oh, would, if you really feel strongly you want to do it, that's fine too. No, I don't feel that strongly. I just <laughs> <laughs> want to make sure I know that you wanted to do it. Well, I thought you said you were busy and you yeah. were tied up. I thought you were tied up. I will be out of town during parts of part of July, but it doesn't mean I can't discuss logistics. I can't meet in person until later in July. Yeah, we can so. certainly hold um, uh, virtual ad hoc meetings. We have the ability to do that, right, Josh? Uh, that's correct. There's no restrictions on when the uh, ad hoc okay. meets. Oh, then never mind. I don't. Well, I guess Tom's. It appears Tom wants to do it. Yeah. So one of one of this one of you two want to do it as well, or? So do we do Rochambeau? No, if you want to do it, you can do it. <laughs> and I'll just remind the board president. I don't believe we've taken public comment on this. I, 
I don't believe we've taken public uh, comment on this item. Uh, so okay. We, we haven't. Maybe we should stop right there and take that the comment before we get too far along. Thank you, um, Becky Steinbrenner. I actually think it would be better if you held an election. And here's why. Um, you have a better chance of getting um, maybe a different mindset, fresher ideas on your board. I think that that would be the best way to go. And correct me um, if, if I'm wrong, but I, I think that there is a an election coming up in November, could it be combined with a November election? We got no information about that. <clears throat> but I think that's that's a better way to go, a fairer way to go, and would benefit the, the board um, rather than uh, just having someone that you appoint that you know you're going to get along with and is going to agree with you, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, I understand if you don't want to do that. I, I remember when Director Meyer passed away, and I attended both of the board meetings wherein the applicants were interviewed, and I thought it was a very interesting process. But I don't know if any of the applicants really knew or had a clear list of the criteria that um, would be used to evaluate them. And that should certainly be something that the ad hoc committee should do, so that everybody has a, a, a level playing field. I felt like um, people interviewed in a different way and really didn't know what you were looking for. So I, I would like to see uh, an election, and I think you could put out a survey to your ratepayers. You have time. And ask what they want. Make them aware of this vacancy put out a survey to your rate payers and see what they think, and maybe you'll get someone from them. May I have one additional minute just to uh, say some kind words about um, Director Daniels? Okay. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, um, I am surprised that he has resigned, but I wish him the best. I think um, he and I did not agree <laughs> on many things, and we had words. But I always admired and respected his firm dedication and resolution to act to conserve the water, groundwater levels as he understood the information. And he was not afraid of voting against the unanimous board for things, and I really respected him for that. I, I remember when he tried to get a moratorium on hookups, and that was a very brave thing to do, and he did it out of his conviction. And I really respect him a lot for doing that and other kinds of actions. So I wish him well, and uh, look forward to seeing who comes to sit on your board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I wasn't really trying to make a decision on that. We were just... Yeah, I just wanted to remind you, you didn't have to pause there. Yep. Um, I'll just add, um, yeah, those uh, words of President Daniels are really appreciated. And that, you know, again, his help with Pure Water SoCal and, and the water demand offset program were, were paramount. I, wanna, I do want to point out to the board, uh, you know, as in the past, there have been several elections where nobody's ever uh, run against the board. And if we did have to have an election, that usually costs us around sixty thousand dollars. So something to be mindful for our ratepayers, um, if you chose to go that route. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, I would just put a shout out for people who not just show interest at the time of the uh, uh, availability, but also who who have you know put in time at the district, like through various committees and that, that sort of thing have shown um, interest along the way, I think, is important. So I'll stop there. Interest in, in knowledge, that's, it, it, that doesn't come out on an off-year off election. I, and it's just as expensive to run the election as 
now, now when no one's even thinking about voting or in the regular election period. So that's why we've tended away from elections. We don't, uh, I think we learned more about the candidates before that by interviewing them personally. Uh, and it's really, uh, just speaking personally, for my first election, it was really a lot of sudden work <laughs> to suddenly run for an election. And I think you have better preparation if you know what the board is doing, what the whole purpose of the district and involved in the nitty gritty. So I think it's, I think it works just really well. Anyway, uh, so we're back to the subcommittee. <laughs> okay. So you and Tom want to do it? I just wish to do it because I, I think I might be overcommitted for those months. Okay. I don't mind doing it. I, as I said, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not on vacation. I'm here. Okay. Uh, then the, in terms of when do we have the special board meeting? or meetings? Yes, that's what we're deciding. We have the 25th, the 1st, the 8th. We still, do we first have a motion for whether we do an appointment or call an election before we decide on those things? Oh, on. OK. Should should we do that? I think we should wait in. until we have, we go to the second point, second point. Uh, Assuming the first point? Right. Well, I guess we, yeah, we have. You're correct. So I'll make the motion that we fill the vacant director position by appointment. I'll second. Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Lather? Yes. And President Christensen? Yes. Okay, so with that motion made um, that the board will be uh, selecting by appointment, we will um, be looking at motion two. Um, we, and I, I believe that um, part of that motion will include the, um, the election of the ad hoc committee members, which you have just discussed. Um, I wanted to seek input um, from the board on the vacancy announcement. Um, which you'll see as uh, attachment number two. If there was any comment, um, I did some research um, to see uh, other out, uh, advertisements posted on uh, this type of vacancy, and this is pretty similar to what I've seen, um, you know, in, in the last week or so since we've been working on this. And um, if there's any input or comment, I'd happy to take that so we can get the vacancy announcement just as soon as possible out to the public. I have I a just question. Gonna say it, it doesn't have to be in the announcement, but I do agree that it would be good to give some idea of two candidates who apply of what would be our priorities or like what would be an, uh, a positive for people applying, you know, whether that's interest in yeah. what the board's been doing already demonstrated or whether that's, you know, an area of scientific understanding. I don't know. But, um, you know, at some point, I think the announcement looks fine for getting it out there. I was going to make a similar suggestion that we include in the announcement, perhaps, or uh, one of our planning documents that spells, you know, a link to that so that they can easily see what what exactly what Tom talked about what are where we're going I mean our strategic plan stuff yeah maybe I could suggest because we want to get this out as early as possible that we make a, uh, a note in there that you know visit the website the priorities or whatever are listed at that site just because it can take a, a little bit to figure that out and then we get that up as quickly as possible yeah well i one of our existing pages community okay. plan okay yeah yeah well I, community water plan comes to no, mind yeah mm, i see write a 
should we try to tweak that or should we? I just came up with three that I had been thinking about. One was the knowledge and interest in what the district is doing, previous experience contributions to water, you know, water supplies, and uh, or something like that, and the ability to make a time commitment, is, you know, for evening meetings. I mean, those are that's the basic thing. We didn't we didn't really go with any preconceptions in the last time we went through this process. We didn't make any any uh, prior judgments on what kind of a candidate we were looking for. Uh, and it wasn't merely a compatibility thing. It was really more what their insights and what their contributions they were interested in making. And we have in our application, our experience, our knowledge, what we believed. Mm -hmm. I, I remember doing a lot of work there, filling that out. There were out. questions in the application. So, that, but that, yeah. so you're going to use those same kind of yeah. Yeah. The, the ad hoc committee will be uh, looking at the last recruitment uh, documents that we've used. And so we'll be able to tweak those to what we. So we don't have to do that right now. No, we do not have to do that right now. And that's why the ad hoc committee is so helpful and important. But I think that, I think that's, a, I think that, I remember that was the gist of all that. It yeah. was a really detailed. I apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> I a lot of time on it. Yeah. So the, the applications, so we're getting this announcement out. As soon as possible, but don't we have to have an application that's actually somewhere? Yes. Yes. So we would probably call the ad hoc committee together um, as quickly as possible as well, and we can do that virtually again um, uh -huh. to try and, and get some feedback on the the documents that we'll be using. That's a good starting place. Would be okay. the application from the last time we had to do this. Yeah, and we may tweak this thing a little bit in front of you to say something like uh, appearing on the website soon or something like that, more information or a date by which it's, it is, um, just so we can get this out and then sure. layer it as we go, get, get input from two committee members. Yeah. Or you could put a, a dummy website. I mean, just on the, not a dummy <laughs> website, but a, oh, yeah. a page Coming where soon. it says, yeah. 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 That's a good idea. So I have a. A link that doesn't mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. I like that even better. And then have that information on that saying this will be updated by such and such a date. Or so. So, so, so now I'm really confused because I'm the only one that didn't say anything nice about Dr. Daniels. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought we were going to do this at the end, and now I realize there is no place for us to well, say anything. I don't think he's even here. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. I want to make sure we get to the motions, but okay. yes, do your, do your, please. please. Um, are we going to do one where he's actually going to be here? That's the, that's the goal. Yes. Okay. We just haven't had time. We'll wait for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we'll sorry about that confusion. <laughs> so back to the motions. Yes. Motion one, um, we already did. Motion two is still up. Um, so I think the only thing outstanding right now is identifying dates. Yes. Um, and those would be interview dates for the board to call a special meeting um, and or utilize a regular, the regularly scheduled meeting in August since you've identified that as your, your target. Well, so, um, we actually could appoint someone before August. I think that should be the fa fallback yeah. in case that's there's correct. some yeah. issue. That's correct. So May I guess we should one. get started as soon as we can. And it's mm -hmm. almost. And that's pushing close to the 60-day deadline. Yes. Uh, again, the 60-day deadline is August 18th, and the um, the board meeting is August 15th. So. So I guess I would shoot at least for August 1st and 8th. Now we give us the month. August 1st and August 8th is what I'm hearing. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Anybody, you can disagree. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you can. I think a lot of the work can be done by the okay by the committee. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I'm trying to remember whether or not it was only the committee that met with the applicants last time. No, it was every everybody. No, it was the entire board. Yeah, so it was okay. board meeting. The entire board would have to commit, but. 
what about the idea of setting on one of those dates and then having it a one, two, like August 1st and 2nd rather than. Uh, you could do that. I was gonna, I was gonna mention that. Um, um, it, we were just trying to stick with Tuesdays, but if we think, if you think you're gonna have, you know, or the potential to have, you know, two days worth of candidates, probably is better to put them uh, right next to each other. Um, you don't forget. And that, yeah, that keeps fresh in your mind as you're um, discussing your candidates, so. So do we want to do first, second, or yeah, first eighth, ninth? I'd, I'd like the first and second. Yeah. I'm not going to be here for a second, but I could oh, probably. Uh, do the eighth, ninth. I could, I could, I could um, zoom in. Are you here the 8th and 9th? 8th, I am, yeah, 8th, 9th. I well, let's just do it then. Let's do it then. I'm, I'm not. Tom? Yeah, that's okay. Is that pushing it? Is that cutting it too close? I don't think so. No. no, the next board meeting is the 15th, so you have another week. You have a fallback. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So we could either point on the 8th or the 9th. And surely a point by the 15th. That's correct. Okay. And then would they be an evening then? Or what we were going to decide on time? Yeah, evenings are best for me. I think since I the work. board meetings are in evenings, right. it makes sense to have the, the interviews in the evenings too. Maybe the candidates also. I, I just wanted to have us keep that in the motion too. Yeah. That, that's yeah. all. Would you like to make a motion? I can make a motion that we have the meeting, um, these special meetings for selection of a board member on August 8th and 9th, starting at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, we can always cancel the 9th if we don't need it, but I think we should just kind of schedule that. Um, so that's, I don't know if I need to include anything else in that Carla and I would be on the subcommittee and the I guess we already gave some input on the vac no changes to the vacancy announcement, just except for adding that there's going to be a website to follow, right? I'll second that. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Vice President Jaffe? Yes. Director LeHue? Yes. Director Lather? Yes. And President Christensen? Yes. Put it on my schedule. Thank you. And I'd like to also point out uh, to the board that uh, thanks to uh, our legal general counsel, Josh, he was very instrumental in working with Tracy and myself to um, make sure all the technical aspects of the memo were correct. So thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. And location right, to be determined. The, uh, we're adjourning the public meeting now, then. Oh, yeah. Can I ask one question about that? Just keep us, I didn't know what the location of those meetings would be. I guess you'll work on that, right? Yeah, mm. we have some ideas, but um, okay, we can discuss that. Are we going to closed session? We're moving to closed session, so, so anyone who so wishes to So we don't to adjourn comment. the meeting until after closed session. We adjourn session. Okay. out of it, but we have uh, comments, public comments on the closed session right now. May I? Yes, there you are. Thank you. Public comment on closed session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Becky Steinbrunner. Um, I just want to say that uh, what I have, the, the legal challenges I have taken were not what I wanted to do, but I felt there was no other choice. And the more I learned, and the more I continue to learn, the more I understand that it is necessary. Most recently, a Public Records Act request from California Department of Fish and Wildlife revealed that that agency did not comment on your EIR, as you know, in 2018. It is required by law that they do so to develop enforceable and effective mitigations for when the project is not only under construction, but also when it's operational. And that bothers me a lot. It did at the beginning, and it bothers me even more as I see that the project has been modified 
to attach pipes on both sides of the Laurel Street Bridge. There was no consultation with California Department of Fish and Wildlife for that either. They did not even know. And it was only through the good action of Ms. Jane Mio that construction stopped last summer while the swallows that migrate here from Argentina every year to raise their young under that bridge, she was able to get it stopped by talking with a biologist that she knows. Fish and Wildlife didn't know about that. <laughs> and now that the swallows are back, or supposed to be back, the work has continued on the bridge regardless of that, and there are no swallows at the bridge. So I want you to think about that. Thank you. President Christensen, I'll just say, we don't comment on pending litigation, but in light of all the uh, lawsuits that the litigant has brought against the district and our, basically our customers, because that's who pays for it, uh, the judges and the appeal courts have ruled in our favor on their, all of the cases and in favor of the Coastal Commission. Uh, and we feel very um, comfortable that we have followed all applicable laws. Are we going to closed session now?